Good happy Wednesday evening, March 9, 2022. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Wednesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday evening, so let's get started right now. First step. Man wounded in shooting on Amherst Street in Manchester, police say. Investigators say gunshots were heard near Central High School. A man was injured in a shooting in Manchester on Wednesday, police said. The man was found with a gunshot wound that wasn't believed to be life-threatening and was taken to a local hospital, police said. Investigators said a black vehicle was seen leaving the area after the shooting. Police found the man after investigating reports of gunshots heard on Amherst Street near Central High School. Police said the school was placed into a secure campus mode. An area around the school was secured, officers said. In dismissal was set to take place as normal. Part of Amherst Street remained closed to Maple to Beach Streets while police investigate. Anyone with information about the shooting is asked to call Manchester Police at 603-668-8711. Anonymous tips can be called into 603-624-4040. New Hampshire communities push for changes in zoning policies to address lack of workforce housing. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Manchester Boston Regional Airport has daily nonstop. Ruth Lewin Griffin Place is nearing completion. Its 64 one- and two-bedroom units meant to build up workforce housing in a state figured to be some 30,000 units short of what's needed to keep and attract workers. The missing middle here in Portsmouth, people who aren't the lowest income people in our community, but the, um, the workers here in our world-class economy and our creative economy and our hospitality industry and all the nonprofits. Nearly 250 people applying so far for rent that's half the price of anything else in the city. But in the time it took to build Griffin Place, the city has lost more affordable housing than it's gained. We've got to find ways to speed up uh, the process because it's not like we're keeping up, we're actually going backwards right now. The Portsmouth City Council has created a housing committee to review policies and zoning that would allow for more workforce housing. And so whether that's single family zoning or removing open space to demand affordable housing, we're looking at it all. The city already working on new codes and ordinances to help. On two cases um, right now, the planning board has approved um, projects, but with the stipulation that a certain amount of units are set aside to be reserved for workforce housing. And what our housing committee is doing is looking at all the incentives that exist that are, that are given to us to say, hey, we can do this, and how can we maximize that? Because right now in Portsmouth, there's a lot of development, but there's a feeling that we are not getting out of that development what the community wants. Challenges and changes that are happening statewide. In Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. One arrested in connection with alleged assault at Manchester Hotel, police say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. This is the season we've been waiting for. So let's do this. Grab your crew and get out and ride.
Mike, according to the press release that was just issued, police say they responded to the Even Hotels on Johnny e. Divine Drive around 4.30 this morning and to check on the condition of the subject. And there they found a man with a cut on his head. Now, much of the area in front of the hotel remained taped off for the morning. There were also multiple evidence markers in the parking lot, along with the heavy police presence. Now, one man who said he was staying at the hotel said he heard a man and woman arguing around 4.30 this morning outside his first floor window. He believes a third person joined in the argument and one person began running away towards an adjacent Sunoco station on South Willow Street. He then heard a man say, he shot me. Now, according to the press release that again was just issued, uh, police say that when they went to that Sunoco area, they also found some blood on the pavement there along with the shell casing and that they are currently investigating to see if the two scenes are connected. When we get some more information about what happened from police, we will put it on our website or our mobile app. Reporting live outside the Manchester Police Department, Ray Brewer, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Art Gallery in Exeter honors Ukraine raises money for charity helping country. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. You feel like Do I really live here? One look at you and I still get the butterflies. Even after all these years, you really are my always and forever home. Lasting beauty that makes a first impression again and again. With James Hardy, it's possible. Currently, there are over 40 pieces on display, but artists are bringing in new ones all the time. And aside from the common theme of sunflowers, the Artist Association is also hoping it sends a message that shows they care. I wanted to see, you know, to have all our window plastered with sunflowers. And that is now the case at the Seacoast Artists Association in Exeter. The window's covered with the national flower of Ukraine. For Anique Bouvron Gromick, what's happening in Ukraine brings back memories of her childhood during World War II. Having been a child during the war, so every time I see a picture of those children, I remember, I see myself. For her painting... I have the dark background and then the blue, of which is a sphere, which could be the hurt and then the color of the sunflower. So it was just renewal. The response from fellow artists who want to participate in the show was overwhelming. Space quickly filling up. All the artists are donating 100% of the proceeds. None of us wanted to make money on this tragedy. The money will go to the World Central Kitchen and its chef. And the fact that he's now feeding 150,000 um, people fleeing the war a day, is pretty amazing, and I know they, they always need funds. As for what she thinks of the display and the work done by fellow artists... And it just gives you some hope. There's a reception here at the gallery Friday night from 5 to 7. When all is said and done, they hope to have raised over $7,100. Although, as they put it, people can always pay more if they want. In Exeter, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. No new COVID-19 deaths reported in New Hampshire as active cases continue climbs. There are 47 current COVID-19 hospitalizations in the state. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great evening. Good night and goodbye, everyone.